When is the last time you listened to AM radio? If you're like most people, the answer is probably in the car. But now, some car makers want to leave AM radio out of their newest electric cars. Today, we'll talk about the pros and cons of that choice. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. AM radio is not usually trending, but today we're going to talk about car makers who are quietly leaving AM radio out of their new electric vehicles. And we'll ask whether this is a good idea or not. In the second half of today's episode, I'll show you how to talk about an advantage someone has in a competition. What do you have going for you? This is lesson 652 of Plain English, which means JR has uploaded the full transcript and exercises to plainenglish.com slash 652. Cars and radio just seem to go together. It hasn't always been that way. Early cars didn't come with radios. Though Chevrolet put a radio in a car in 1922, most people thought they were dangerous distractions. Some U.S. states even proposed banning them. But by the 1940s, the combination caught on. And for many decades, people got in the car and instinctively turned on the radio. Now, though, times are changing, slowly. Many people do listen to radio broadcasts in the car. In fact, for many people, the car is the one place they still listen to traditional radio. But increasingly, people listen to streaming music, podcasts, and audiobooks in the car. If they do tune to a radio broadcast, they often opt for an FM station. Still, an AM antenna is a cheap part, and car makers are happy to include it in new vehicles, even if most drivers don't need or want it. But there's one big exception to that electric vehicles. The electric current that drives the motor in electric cars interferes with the AM radio signal, adding a lot of additional static. For that reason, AM radio is just less useful and less pleasant to listen to in an electric car. And this, as fewer and fewer people even tune in to AM radio in the first place. And so car makers like BMW, Tesla, Volvo, and Volkswagen have decided not to include AM radios in their new electric cars, figuring that it wouldn't cause much of a fuss. They were wrong. AM radio is not sexy or new. It's a century-old technology without any recent improvements. But it does still play an important role in daily life for many people. And lawmakers, broadcasters, and other activists are pushing back on the removal of AM radio. To understand why, let's take a look at who listens to AM radio and how it's different from FM radio. Before we do this, I should point out 
that broadcast spectrum is regulated by national governments, so the details might be different where you live. But I'll tell you how it works in the U.S. and Canada. Start with the basics. The physics of AM and FM radio affect their signals. AM radio covers a wider area with a lower quality signal. FM radio covers a smaller area, but the sound quality is higher. AM radio signals can be heard hundreds of miles away, especially on clear nights. Even the most remote areas of the U.S. and Canada are within reach of AM stations at night. The most remote towns might not have good cell service. They might not have high-speed internet. They might not have broadcast television stations or FM radio stations, but they can get AM radio. Listening preferences have changed over the years. While AM radio was the original way to listen to the wireless, the FM signal has become more popular lately. In the U.S. and Canada, FM has typically been for music, while AM has typically been more oriented toward news, talk. And sports, but these days the big city news and talk stations simulcast on FM, so listeners in big cities can stay on the FM band to get their news and sports. But AM radio still has several things going for it. AM radio is the cheapest way. To get a broadcast license for niche operators, broadcasters who can't pay for pricier FM spectrum, they make their homes on AM. Foreign language, religious, minority, cultural, and educational broadcasts can all be found on the AM band. AM stations are more likely to be owned by black, immigrant, or minority owners than FM or television broadcast stations are. Some rural regions have no newspaper or TV station, so the AM radio station is the only truly local source of news. The government. Also uses AM radio for emergency announcements. Today, the fastest way to reach the most people is with an emergency alert on cell phones, but that won't reach everyone. AM radio is still a good way to reach older people, those in more rural areas, and those without access. To cell phones, there is a political angle too. In the U.S., AM radio is popular with right-wing broadcasters. In the 1980s, AM radio stations began broadcasting opinion-based content with a definite right-wing viewpoint. Listeners who were unhappy with The left-wing orientation of major television broadcasters, they found a home listening to national and local talk shows on AM radio. So, by removing AM radios from their cars, car makers have raised the ire of a whole host of constituents, religious. And foreign language broadcasters, safety advocates, advocates for the elderly and rural population, 
and right-wing talk radio broadcasters and listeners. Some U.S. lawmakers are now proposing a requirement to keep AM radio in new cars. This issue makes for some strange bedfellows. Sean Hannity is a right-wing talk radio host with over 17 million weekly listeners. He is not normally in favor of government intervention in private business. But on this, he's fully aligned with the left-wing U.S. Senator from Massachusetts, Ed Markey. Both want a government requirement to save AM radio in new cars. They say that car makers should work harder to find a way to shield the AM antenna from interference with the car's electronics. It is technically possible. Stellantis, which makes Chrysler and Jeep cars, and Kia have both used shielded cables and design tweaks to make AM radio work in electric vehicles. Other brands, such as Volkswagen, have said it's not worth the expense. The controversy over AM radio in electric cars is a bit of a farce, though. AM's advantages are in precisely the places where people are not buying electric cars. Nobody driving through the mountains in Wyoming or the remote areas of Alberta is doing so in an electric car. And they're still putting AM radios in gas-powered cars. I don't know where I stand. I don't generally think it's a good idea for the government to require an old technology to stay in place just because some people like it today. That sounds like standing in the way of progress. But there is something to the safety argument. It's not fun to think about truly terrible possibilities, but sometimes those old, simple technologies are the ones that work in an emergency. There could be a war in space. Satellites could be knocked out. Undersea internet cables could be cut. We could be the victim of cyber warfare. You can't always count on television, the internet, cell phone signals, things like that. Plus, what about a hurricane, a blackout, a nuclear accident? AM radio could be like the last resort to get information out to people if the modern systems go down. But is the best answer to burden car makers with a requirement to put an AM antenna in every new electric car? I don't know. I'm not convinced. <music> Today, I'm going to show you a new way of talking about an advantage that a person or a thing might have, to have something going for you. If you have a few advantages in a competition, I might say you have a few things going for you. Let's imagine that you just had a job interview and you're not too optimistic about your chances. You come out of the interview all depressed. You think you have no chance. You go to meet a friend later, and the friend tries to cheer you up. She says, don't be so pessimistic. You have a lot going for you. That means you have a lot of advantages. You have a lot going for you. Whenever a new restaurant or cafe opens, I always speculate on whether it will last. So when a new place opens, I think, 
What does this place have going for it? What advantages does this place have? Does it have a unique menu? Does it have a great design? Does it have good prices or high prices to make it seem exclusive? Does it have a good selection of drinks? These are all potential advantages of a new cafe, bar, or restaurant. There was a place in Chicago I really liked called Surge. It was near my most recent apartment. Surge is a pool hall, billiards. That's an old time Chicago thing, a billiard hall. The famous Paul Newman movie Cool Hand Luke was about pool halls in Chicago. But they're dying. Pool halls don't make a lot of money anymore since people go to play at the tables and not buy drinks. But Surge has a few things going for it. The front area is a nice bar, so you can go and enjoy the space even if you aren't playing pool. Or you can go with a group and not everyone has to play if they don't want to. That's one advantage. The other thing it has going for it is that it's a coffee bar during the day. So the bar area in the front serves coffee and breakfast in the mornings and turns into a bar at night. So the place can be open and making money 18 hours a day. I even saw people play pool in the morning with their coffee instead of a beer. So Surge is doing well. It has a lot of things going for it. It has a lot of advantages. Entire cities, states, countries can be in competition too. A lot of people are reconsidering living in California. California is a great state, but it has high taxes, high regulations, and high costs. A lot of people and businesses are moving to lower cost states like Texas and Florida. What do Texas and Florida have going for them? They have a nice climate, lower taxes, and a friendly business environment. Utah is an interesting example. Utah is the home of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. The state is very strongly associated with the Mormon Church. And for many, many years, the religious influence in Utah was very strong. When I first visited Utah, you were not allowed to order any alcoholic beverages unless you were also ordering a meal. This is true. To get around the rule, you had to pick up a menu, pretend to study it, and fake interest in eating while you had your first drink. But Utah has a few things going for it today. First, the state has relaxed some of its weirder religious laws. You can now drink a single beer without pantomiming interest in eating. Second, it's close to California. The outdoors are great. You can ski in the winter and hike in the summer. And finally, it has a friendly business environment without the more polarized politics that you sometimes find in Texas and Florida. So when I say Utah has a few things going for it, I mean to say Utah has a few things working in its favor. It has a few advantages. 
Do you listen to AM radio? I'm guessing a small percentage of this audience answers yes. Some of you do, but I bet most don't. I used to listen to AM radio, mostly for sports, but now I stream baseball radio broadcasts on my phone. AM radio is a century-old technology, and some car makers have chosen not to include AM antennas in their new cars. AM listenership is in decline, but AM radio has a few things going for it. It has a few advantages. It covers a much wider area than FM covers. It's more reliable than cell phone coverage. And for many minority communities, AM radio provides important broadcast content. So don't count AM radio out yet. It still has those few things going for it. It still has those advantages. I have a lot of good memories of AM radio. Driving in the wide open areas of rural America, you can often scan the FM dial and go through the whole band and not get any station, just static. But there's always something on AM. FM sounds better, but there's something about the static and the crackle and the imperfection of AM radio that I'll always associate with summertime and listening to baseball games, either in my room as a kid or later in my car in the days before cell phones. If it goes away, I'll be sad, but such is progress. Speaking of progress, congratulations on all the progress you're making in English. No static here, thanks to our producer, JR. Thursday's lesson is going to be shorter, easier, lighter. It's coming out on a very special day, and we'll talk about what's so special about this coming Thursday. See you then.